Hey everyone, in this video I'll be talking about how to analyze your survey data. Uh, please understand that this video is going to be long. Also, I'll be switching from one survey to another and it gets hard to understand how to analyze survey questions if you're not aware of the questions or the nature of, of these questions. Uh, in fact, it gets really hard to analyze survey questions if the data that you're obtaining is not in quantitative format. Um, I have a number of questions. I have a number of surveys. Some of these are not designed by me. I was only uh, made to share or look at them just for analysis purposes. So I only analyzed these the data from these surveys. I never designed the questions. Um, hence, to really explain how to analyze a survey, uh, I would be switching from one survey to another because the nature of questions that were designed didn't really help obtain the valuable data or didn't really help obtain uh, the valuable analysis because some questions were in an open-ended format uh, and some questions were in the in the numerical format let's say if I'm employed which of the courses I have completed, right? So I have simply put down the question, uh, simply put down the names of the subjects. Um, and, I, and there are wide where I might input some courses, but not the other courses because I'm too tired as a participant. As a participant, hence, when somebody is employed, what courses are they taking? It's really hard to analyze because you have not given specific choices to your participants and the data is open-ended and the data is everywhere so it's not in a structured format so hence uh, the reason I went through each of each of your surveys and gave you some um, and gave you detailed feedback was just for these reasons I have analyzed so many surveys and I know the issues that um, researchers encounter when the surveys are not designed correctly um, all in all, um, this is a class project and for most of you this is probably your first research project. So um, at least in terms of the results, I'm not going to be too, uh, too much of a strickler as I was with the questions. Um, however, I would like to see your demographic data and it's really easy to get the demo demographic data. All you have to do is to just simply write it down and Qualtrics just does the analysis for you. However, what I wish to see from all of you is to at least come up with two hypotheses. And uh, I think many of you did not have an hypothesis in your earlier assignments for this project. So if you did not have one, please have fun. You had readings about what hypotheses are and how to write them. Um, if you're unsure, you can just read up those modules and understand. However, just to explain in simple terms, a hypothesis just tries to find out relationship between two aspects. Let's say the more an individual uses social media or the more the time an individual spends on social media, the less likely the person is going to trust social media, right? So there, there's an inverse correlation between the two. Uh, in this case, when you have such an hypothesis, you will have two questions. You will be testing a person's trust in social media and a person's use of social media. Uh, and you'll be analyzing these two variables. And I'll tell you in this video how to do that. So I need to have you need to have at least two hypotheses, right? This was one hypothesis. A second hypothesis could be, let's say, um, and coming up from your own proposals that you have from your own topics. In simple terms at times, this is how a hypothesis is written. Higher the use of social media, more is the time or higher is the time spent on social media, okay? Or higher the use of social media, uh, higher is an individual's likelihood to come across 
uh, fake news. Okay. So two questions, one that measures how many times you've encountered fake news or misinformation and how often are you using social media? So again, two aspects that you are trying to compare. So I need to have at least two hypotheses in your report, which you have analyzed using cross tabs or using uh, Qualtrics. And I'll teach you in this video how to do that. But apart from the demographic questions for which you don't need to do anything, but just look at where to analyze the demographic questions in Qualtrics and I'll be showing you that too. That is a basic thing. Uh, what is more important is whether you are trying, whether you are able to get this connection between the two variables and whether you are finding any relationship of any kind between these, between any two variables that you are measuring in your project. Okay. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at how to conduct analysis. So here is the first survey that you see on your screen. Uh, I conducted it with one of my colleagues, um, uh, Dr. Nicholas Hershen. Him and me looked at how fans portray themselves when one of their teams, a sport team, loses right uh, to what extent is win and loss uh, impacting um, not just the win and loss but let's say somebody is disgracing and insulting their team in in um, in a popular television comedy how do they then uh, feel about their own identification self-esteem and shame and this was a very big survey a number of a lot of questions I'll look at a few of these questions to give you certain examples. Remember, you need two hypotheses in your results, uh, in your analysis, at least two. You can have more than two, and if it's more than two, that's really awesome. But you need to have two major hypotheses which are related to your topic that you have proposed in your study. Um, in this case, we said that uh, higher the uh, identification as a fan of New York Islanders, higher is the shame uh, the fans experience after a team loses, right? Uh, so we wanted to find out whether this was true. When something is going higher, is the other uh, shame-related aspects also higher? But Prior to that, uh, at this point, I want to show you how to first look at the demographic data of your participants. Uh, and it's really easy. You don't have to worry too much. Uh, I, I hope this is how your homepage looks. Uh, as I said, I have a number of surveys, but uh, this is how it should look for you when you're designing it, right? This is where you designed it. Uh, I have a number of Likert type questions, as, as you can see. Uh, from strongly disagree to strongly agree on a, on a scale of one on one on five and we had five questions to measure each of these aspects like we had five questions to measure self-esteem we had five questions that measured shame we had five questions that measured uh, self fan identification not just one question we had five questions each uh, we basically add up those scores on uh, the five questions and then analyze the data in uh, in SPSS, not in Qualtrics. But this is a class project for you guys. So as I said, this is going to be a basic level analysis, a level one analysis that you will be doing for this class. But uh, you need to prove and you need to show me that you understand the cross tabs, the relationship between two variables, and that you are trying, that you do understand what the hypothesis is and whether you are proving the hypothesis or whether you are rejecting the hypothesis, right? Um, so let's let me tell you about the demographics first when you open your uh, Qualtrics page you would see a number of aspects on the top all right data analysis results and reports uh, report is something that you'll be writing when you click on report you, you basically don't see anything because you haven't created one or written one and you don't have to write one here in Qualtrics you will be writing one in Google Docs uh, when you click on results you will see uh, the real results right this is, this is an easy way to report demographics. 
However, this easy way doesn't really show you the percentage percentages. For instance, you see your questions on the left side and you see the analysis done by Qualtrics on the right side, right? Uh, in this case, we did a very wrong thing. Uh, unfortunately, my colleague had already sent the survey out. He said, uh, please type your years and age and uh, he gave an example. But you see, we have 40 pages, right? And people have typed different ages. So it gets really hard for me to analyze whether somebody who is 43 years of age, what is their, how, how strongly do they recognize themselves as a fan on a scale of one to five. Had I just grouped it into five groups, I could have easily said, and Qualtrics could have easily displayed a graph for me with like five groups and their level of fan recognition. However, we did this big mistake of typing in the uh, the age and then it gets really hard. It's not It's not impossible to analyze, but then I'll have to sit and then group all the ages together and then then separately analyze the data with um, the other data that I've found out. Uh, so as I said, it's good to have categories and just have people choose the categories that they have, uh, they, they, that they fit, find themselves in. Um, when you click on gender, one gender was one of our questions. By the way, my first question was, as I said, you need to have instructions and this was an instruction and whether people really wanted to participate in our survey. Um, 239 individuals said yes, none of them said no. So all of these individuals went ahead and participated in the survey, right? And hence I have the yes. Gender, in terms of gender, when you click on your questions, you can easily see how many males, how many females, and how many people, uh, other was the option that we had given uh, a while ago. When you click on ethnicity, again, I have how many whites, how many Hispanics, how many Asians, uh, how many other races or mixed races. Uh, when you scroll down, it gives you the, the mean, mean is the average, uh, and how many individuals really answered this question, right? Uh, how important are the islanders to you? Now we asked this question on a scale of one to five, and you can see that most of the individuals are saying, are, have chosen option four and option uh, five, but so the mean is, so the average rating for how important are the islanders for you uh, for them to win is 4.61 which means that we really have strong fans in our uh, as our participants so like really hardcore fans right um so as you click on each of these questions you will get the data here however you will just see the mean in here right the mean data and the counters so how many people participated or answered that particular question this does not give you anything in percentage okay now there are different ways to analyze the demographic questions uh, let's say for instance i click on the age and i don't want a bar graph but i want to represent the data in a pie graph pie is the round the circle one right i just go down and i say add visualization for every question whenever you click on it you will have the add visualization option oh, actually it does it did give me a percentage, uh, at least for this. Let me see if it gave me for gender. Um, yeah, so I can say 83% uh, of my participants were males. Six, only 16% were females, 16.3%. And 0.44 percentage were others. Uh, in terms of ethnicity, and I'm answering my demographic questions, which you all would. Uh, the first part of your results section needs to be the answers on the demographic. Uh, what is your ethnicity? Uh, the, the highest percentage of individuals who participated in the survey, 90.35 of the participants were, and you can say N equals 206, were, were whites. Um, and you can see the others, oh my God, and the, the, the highest were latinos and hispanics which were only 10 individuals the rest were less than 10 so you see who are the biggest fans of the new york islanders here are basically males who are whites so this is my uh, analysis right uh, this is this is my finding that um 90 of our participants 
were white males. Um, so it seems that the strongest fans of New York Islanders are white males. So this could be a conclusion. Uh, for each of the questions, uh, these are the rating questions and the Likert type questions, you will find um, the, the mean, the average score for each of the questions and the percentages for this. Now you don't have to sit and give me the percentage and the mean for every single question that would that is just not needed. Uh, you need to come up with two hypotheses and then uh, come up with the demographic answers. Just for demographics, you need to give me the percentages, the mean, and then I'll tell you in the next, in the second half, third half of this video, as to how to uh, find or compare two variables. Let's say gender and uh, the the strength of a fan or ethnicity um, and let's say um, how proud is is somebody to be a fan right on a scale of one to five so in order to do that there are different ways to do it i'll show you both uh, in this in the third half of this video uh, the other way to understand demographics is to again go back so this was one way to look at demographic data the other way is to again um, click on uh, click on data analysis okay under data analysis you get a number of options here you go to stats IQ for some of you this could be hard to figure out but this is another way to analyze your data it's really easy you just need a few clicks but if you don't understand and if you're thinking oh my god this is so hard I don't understand it you can simply go back to your results and just keep clicking on the questions as I as I showed you and then write the percentage and the statistics but um, if it's you will have to eventually come to the stage when you're comparing two variables but this is another way to compare your variables again the same way you have your questions on the left side right if I click on ethnicity uh, nothing really shows up here, but when I click on ethnicity, the question turns is highlighted in blue and I have the option called as describe, right? Uh, and that gets highlighted. So if I simply click on describe on the top, you can see that the description comes up here. Now you just don't have the count, but you also have the percentage. You don't have the mean here, but you have the count and the percentage, right? So I can see that, um, out of my 228 participants, 206 participants, which is 90.4% of my participants are white. Okay. In terms of gender, I already told you. Um, and I want to get rid of this, the ethnicity part. So I just simply go and click here. Now I want to see the gender part. So I click on the gender question. It gets highlighted. I click on the describe option here. And it takes a few seconds to show up and then I have males so out of my 227 participants 189 individuals or participants which is 83.3 percent of my participants were males uh, 37 only 37 participants which is 16 percent 16.3 percent of my participants were female this is the second way through which or by which you can look at demographics as I said I don't want these details for every single question. I only wish to seek answers to these demographic, to these, to these aspects for only demographic questions. Um, once you're done with demographic questions, uh, now I'll show you how to compare two variables. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, under data analysis, you will be able to compare uh, your two variables and see the relationship between the two variables. Um, this will also help you to prove or disapprove or refute your hypothesis. All right. Here I can see a number of questions. Uh, one of my, let's say, I'm going to be analyzing two questions here or relate two questions here. I have question number six, uh, which you can see on your screen here. How important is it to you that the New York Islanders win? How important is it to you that the New York Islanders win? And the second question, 
how strongly do you see yourself as a fan of the new york calendars right so here i say that the stronger the fan uh, or the the higher the feeling of a fan or let me just frame it in a very better way uh, the stronger an individual the fan of new new york islanders the stronger the more important is it for them that the new york islanders win okay this is my hypothesis and i'll see if this is true usually i know it's true but my numbers will help me understand whether this is really really true now as i said to compare the two questions or to find the relationship between whether somebody is a big fan and whether that fan for that fan it's really important to win i'm going to be comparing question number 6 and question number 7 in your case you might say that more a person spends time on social media the more they encounter misinformation okay uh so you might be choosing the two questions on the data analysis tab and instead of describing now you just go and click on relate because you want to see the relationship between the two so i click on relate the moment i relate i get some kind of a table such as this uh don't get too overwhelmed by this table you know for many of us especially those who are in the arts field uh, or the humanities field get get really 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 surprised or really really um um anxious when you see numbers but don't do that because these are only percentages percentages is something that you learned in high school the average is something that you learned in high school and this is basic mathematics basic not even mathematics just basic basic statistics okay um so don't get overwhelmed relax just see and try to understand your own data right here you see two questions number 6 on my left side how important is it to you that the new york islanders win um comparing it with how strongly do you see yourself as a fan of the new york islanders and you see my answers are in percentages so when you're comparing these two all those individuals who answered or chose the three of the option all of them 100% of them strongly won the new york new york islanders to win right all those who chose number 4 on a scale found that you see 83 83% of them won new york islanders to win whereas those who chose number 5 this is like 69.9 that's almost 70% of the individuals who rated 5 on question number 6 also chose 5 on question number 7 so that 70% of the fans want the new york islanders to win right this isn't percentage if that is confusing you just click on count right if i have a count you can see a count basis here if this is also confusing you you can switch the questions how do you switch the questions you see the little arrow in here and says you can swap if i simply swap now i think it is really easy for you to understand something right and if i go and click percentage uh you can see that almost 65% of the fans actually i can say uh i can easily say that my hypothesis is proved in this case because the stronger an individual is a fan the more important it is for the individual or the fan that the new york islanders win and now my and this was obvious i know but now my statistics help me prove this right um you can see all my numbers are in the right hand side corner which is 4 and 5 which were 4 and 5 here also 4 and 5 on this question so you can see that almost 93% 93 and more than 93% actually of my individuals here in this case um more than more than 65% of my fans who have rated themselves the highest or who have rated themselves to be the strongest fans remember the average that we saw we saw that uh the average rating of being a fan was 4. Point, I think 16 or something so everything that is above 4 and 5 rather above 4 will be 
with all those individuals who mark themselves uh, who, who chose the option of four will be considered as stronger fans because you know 4.16 was the average rating um, anything above, above the average will be considered oh you're being a strong strong fan um, so four and five if I if I add this up you will notice that almost 93 percent of my my fans strongly want the Islanders to win okay so in this case my hypothesis one is proof that uh, stronger an individual a fan of New York Islanders the more important it is for the individual that the Islanders win that's that's the that, that proves my hypothesis let me show you another example so uh, as I said, I'll show you a second survey. So this is a second survey. Uh, this was the GMC exit survey. Um, probably some of you answered the survey. So this basically was a survey to understand uh, students' experience while being a part of the GMC department, the Journalism and Mass Communication Department, right? Again, I'll show you how I am um, comparing the relationship between two questions or two variables, right? Uh, we had a number of questions. Again, I did not design the survey. I wish I had. I would have made a lot of changes. Uh, but we have a question whether are individuals currently employed? And sometimes you think that individuals who are employed are probably are already having experience with, let's say, uh, skills like that you don't learn in college you learned while on your uh, on on the job uh, or let's say people are so busy with uh, their employment especially at in San Jose State because you know you guys are all uh, it, because it's really expensive to live here you know there are a number of other aspects uh, personal aspects family aspects and it's really important for you to make money uh, and let's say based on that, I say that individuals, students who are employed are more likely to not or um, are more likely to rate their exp to uh, experience or to rate the JMC experience at a lower rate, right? Because they already have experience outside. so. Whatever they're learning in the department, it's not valuable. Uh, and this is based on a previous research that if individuals are already experienced, getting first-hand experience outside, uh, the college education is not really important for them. So my next hypothesis uh, says that individuals who are employed will, will um, uh, rate the JMC, will, um, um, will have a lower rating for the for the experience with GMC okay uh, and then in that case I have the question are you employed and I'm trying to understand the relationship between their experience with GMC so I go and choose that question I chose are you currently employed and then I chose this would be really interesting to see whether my hypothesis will be refuted or whether it will be ex will, whether it will get proved by itself Right, please rate the quality of your education. I might even add something else just just to see if um, even that makes sense. Uh, let's say internship experience. I might say that individuals who are already employed might don't tend to find quality in their internship experience because they already experience on their job. So why do we need internship? Right, and I say relate. And you see that it's doing the analysis for me. I don't have to do anything. Here you go. Are you employed? Yes, full time. Yes, part time. And no. So if you see count, I had like how many individuals who were. I had only 17 individuals answering this survey. So the number is really small. And so it, you, you don't really see big numbers. Um, but <clears throat> five individuals say that their experience was um, excellent and six say that it's good so I can say like 11 individual find their internship experience rated their internship experience good to excellent 
However, my question is whether these were employed or were they not employed, right? So you see a major part here, 41% and 17% and 41% and 41%, right? So those who were employed part-time and those who were not employed, what did they do? They had a good internship experience, right? You can relate part-time and no they're like here when you go here you just see like this um, however those who were fully employed and I don't really have um, much data on that because most of the individuals did not participate in any kind of internship right 29% did not and 29% found it excellent uh, but you can see again in the count, right? Uh, six individuals, five individuals, only one found it fair. How many of the full time? Just one. How many of the part time? Three. Um, so three plus three plus two is five. Four plus one is five. So I have a major chunk here, right here. So those who were part time employed and those who were not employed at all had a good experience with their internship. Okay, those who were fully employed, and the number is really small, three, so it gets really hard for me to say something. Um, but this is what I found out. So um, I can change my hypothesis again, just to suit my results. So those who were, uh, so first thing, my hypothesis was not strongly supported that individuals who were employed will not have a strong internship experience or sorry that was not my hypothesis but yeah that could be my hypothesis but i can also say that one of my hypotheses was individuals who work only part-time or have no uh, employment experience will tend to have uh, will tend to rate will tend to highly rate their internship experience and that's what is found what that's what i have found out through my results and my hypothesis is hence supported. Um, are you currently employed? Although again, statistically there are no significant relationship. I don't want you guys to get into this. It's really hard to understand. It's like the third and the fourth level of statistics. Um, and your participants need to be a lot to really get statistically made differences, statistically significant differences. Right now, I don't want you guys to get into it. So don't get too hassled by it. Um, you can see the count here, right? Are you currently employed and your quality, your average, how do you rate the experience at SGSU? So you can see on an average, those who are full time have rated it, um, an average of 12 and those who were partly employed average of 10 and those were not employed again an average of uh, 12. again i i had a higher number here 14 and only two people who were not employed so um uh, in this case i can still say again two is a really small number so it's really hard to say um it's really hard to say that individuals who are fully employed tended to rate lower uh, tended to rate the quality of education at SJSU at a, at a lower level um, I can twist my hypothesis a bit and I can say that individuals who do not have um, who are not individuals who are not currently employed will rate the well will highly rate the quality of education at SJSU and in this case, my hypothesis is proved because you notice that individuals who are working part-time and who have no experience uh, tended to rate, tended to have a higher rating. Um, and I'll just ignore the two because two is really, really bad number, looks really small. Um, tended to highly rate their um, education level at SGSU. So this is how you would compare and relate your questions with your 
with with your other questions and see the relationship between the two variables as i say when i say variables the two questions two questions that try to understand or get information about two different variables okay um there are different ways to again compare and you can continue watching this video henceforth or you can stop it here but i'll show you one more time how i can compare let's say i want to choose uh major let me just go ahead and see what kind of variable this is i can close this by simply clicking here okay let me see what kind of variable this is okay this is a good variable uh, but you see advertising advertising public relations because you've asked people to type in I have some number of uh, Number of Columns for the same categories, and I don't know the reason why but had you given prior choices all these PR people would be then clubbed together, but here the R is uppercase and I don't know what's wrong with here, but the R has gone lowercase so it's kind of uh, putting these two public relation individuals away from these two public relation individuals. And the creative track has a dash and a comma, and then these people are grouped differently. Right? This is the problem when you don't have already predefined categories. Uh, let's see if I have something else that kind of, it's, it's easy to analyze those results too, but Again, I have to like separately write them down and then separately rate them or combine them. And that's another level of analysis. And it, it gets too much. Um, let's say if I have something more. Uh, something more that I can relate. Uh, wow, well, this was on a scale of 100, which is a bad, bad thing to do. Um, okay, um, this one says on a scale of 1 to 100, again, 1 to 5 is a good number, 1 to 100 is a really huge number. How would you rate the GMC facilities and the labs? I want to see how journalism students are rating it compared to public relations students, compared to advertising students. And I think, uh, or I would hypothesize that um, journalism students would will rate GMC facilities and labs at a higher rate compared to advertising and PR students. And this is again based on my own experience because we have student media and the journalism students, let's say, get a lot of... Um, um, experience with uh, student media here and hence based on that that's my hypothesis it can be wrong all right I have to compare two things the majors and how do the different majors uh, rate the technology and the lab facilities here so I choose question number 32 and I choose question number what's your major question okay and I know this is a very bad question because the categories come separately but here I say relate. The moment I say relate, it's analyzing and doing the analysis for me. Um, so on an average, how are they rating? And I wish they had clubbed this together. But advertising students are rating the facilities um, at an average of 45 to 50. Okay, if I want to give a proper rating, I would just add up all this and then I would average it. Journalism students are definitely rating it more, about 77 um, compared to public relations. And my goodness, this, these are like everywhere. So you see there's a huge range here because the uh, because I've not grouped these individuals together, right? So they're like two, three, four, five individuals. How are they rating it? I would simply add 54, 82, 93, 100 and then divide it by... Uh, two three four five by five okay and see what is the rating that comes in here the average rating this will be my average rating for public relations students this will be my average rating for journalism students and this would be my average rating for advertising students but very clearly and I don't know what is the score for this but at present very clearly I can see this would be somewhere around 50 this would this would PR PR students are also rating it really well so I would say 
uh, my hypothesis is hence proved and that Jordan students are rating or rate GMC facilities at a higher um, at a higher scale or at a higher rate compared to advertising students. However, um, Jordan students do not, however, com in comparison with public relations students, um, their ratings are at par or equal to Jordan students, right? Uh, or equal to public relations students. So, however, journalism and public relations students tend to rate JMC facilities and labs at a similar rate uh, or at a similar level. And you can say how much. Don't just say that. Say how much. What is the average rating for each? Uh, this way you are comparing again two variables and you're finding the relationship between these two. So, um, based on what you are trying to find out in your research topic, state a clear hypothesis. Again, how to frame it, please go ahead and read back. If you've done your readings well, you would know how to frame it. Um, frame it well, you need to have, or you need to have demographics, again, uh, details about demographics. Uh, I think I forgot to show you that you can change the different the ways in which you want the data. Um, let's say I would want to have uh, a data about um, which schools do it. Let's say. Um, what are the reasons for coming to San Jose State? These are different reasons, right? I want to change the way this looks. I can simply change it by saying add visualization. When I go down, I'll have different graphs. Okay, I can go for a pie graph. This is the percentage. Instead of the percentage, I want to have something else. I want to have these names in there. So uh, you can make the changes in here. Um, I think I can do that with the bar graph. Uh, let's say bar graph. Okay, and then I can say, what do I want to have? I want to have show labels, right? It's showing me labels. It's also truncating the labels if you want. Then you can show the legend, right? The count, the number. Uh, how do you want the bar graph? Ascending, descending, you can even choose that. Uh, you want to have horizontal or vertical bar graphs. You can even do that. You can copy the entire graph, you can save it. I think you can get a screenshot of it. Export, you can ex export it as an image file and put it in your report. So you can do different things.